What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today we are back for the my team journey episode number 13 for the Belgian Grand Prix we're getting underway for the second half of this season however it feels a bit weird doing Belgium before the summer break it's it's so weird to be racing in July at this place and then we're gonna have the summer break after this so technically we're not even halfway through the season such is the rapid growth of this calendar Anyway, uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, once again, we are continuing our journey of trying to get to the very top in Formula 1. So far, it's been very successful. Uh, hit the ground running, midfield team right from the off. Uh, the engineers did a great job getting this car set up for its first ever endeavor in, uh, in this sport. And uh, we've just been going from strength to strength. Getting points, getting wins, podiums. It's been quite the whirlwind. And now we have a new teammate in Devon Butler. Check out the last episode if you haven't already. I believe it was the Hungarian Grand Prix. <laughs> Absolutely mental episode. So much happened in that race. Um, yeah, just, just go check it out. Um, I'm, I'm going to spoil the video now, though. We did get robbed with the red flag. We led every lap. We got... Uh, pole position, and then we got we got shafted by the red flag glitch, which uh, reared its ugly head. Now I have gone ahead, and I've probably recorded about three episodes in advance. Um, so we are actually racing before the patch, uh, which came out today, by the way, as I'm uh, you know, releasing this video. Uh, but we turned red flags off for the next three races, uh, and I think from about uh, Singapore onwards, or whatever races after Monza. Red flags should be back. But for the meantime, uh, yeah, we won't get affected. Well, we shouldn't get affected by that anymore. So, um, yeah, we'll be looking for redemption today. Um, absolutely robbed. We've got P7 in the last race. And, uh, yeah, if I can somehow get another win in this in this season of career mode, I'd be very happy with that. I think, um, you know, it has to be discussed. The odds of winning the championship. Um, you know, I wasn't really thinking about the championship this season. And I don't think we should be talking about it uh, after losing that win. I think it's a bit too far-fetched to expect that to happen in the first season. Uh, but you never know if there's if there's some wins, if we can get a roll on, then who knows? Who bloody knows? I've never been in a position to win the championship in season one. I'm not quite that alien level pace to pull that off. But, uh, you know, never say never. We'll see if we can keep upgrading. Uh, we'll keep working on the facilities in the background. Um, I guess like the, the key thing for us now is just getting the, the influx of cash to be able to upgrade the facilities, which will then open us up to invest more in the team to be able to push them harder with um, upgrades, simultaneous development, less failures. Failures right now are holding us back quite far. Um, yeah, a lot of upgrades have been failing lately and it's really uh, starting to slow down our rate of progression. Currently only 800k in the uh, reserves for the bank, so uh, not got a lot of cash at the moment. But uh, the next thing I want to do is is get my, I probably sh probably say chassis department up to spec 2 and we can go ham on weight reduction and tire wear upgrades because the chassis is the worst part of the car right now. Anyway, looking ahead to the race weekend, we're going to go and change the tire allocation for a change. We're going to go with a softer compound of tires because there is a sprint race coming up in the, uh, Bra not Brazilian, the Belgian Grand Prix. So um, yeah, we're going to go aggro in the sprint race, use softs and uh, try and do the usual strategy of undercutting everyone with uh, all the sauce that we have. Performance index, uh, we do draw level with McLaren. Top four teams kind of pull away with the exception of Ferrari. So it will be tougher to mix it with those guys, but uh, we'll give it our best shot. This is a power track. And uh, surprise, surprise, we have the best engine in the whole field. So yeah, we might be half decent here. There might even be some weather. Let's head to the race weekend now and see how we get on. Welcome to qualifying for the Belgian Grand Prix here in Spa. It, traditionally, this is kind of one of my weaker tracks uh, of the last couple of years, ever since we, we switched into this most recent formula of, uh, you know, ground effect kind of Formula 1 cars. 
Uh, and I'll tell you why. It's it's particularly like the chicanes around this circuit. You uh, you need to use a lot of curb, and there's not the greatest level of trust in the world. Hello. Teammate was uh, 23rd in the standings of 22 drivers. Wanted to point that out. Uh, we do escape qualifying one, by the way. Devon actually going pretty quick there. P14. Uh, quicker than us, which is uh, a nice change to see that he is starting to get to grips with this car, which is, uh, yeah, lovely to see. Hopefully, uh, first points for him can be uh, on the horizon. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, that Laycom chicane that we just went through there, um, particularly, it, it's hit and miss. I'm not overall consistent through there. I'd like to be at the level where I can take an aggressive line, put the whole car or most of the car over the curbs, particularly the entry curb on the right-hander. Uh, which really sets you up well for, for the rest of that complex. And I definitely feel like we're giving up a few tents there. Um, as well, later on in the lap, you want to use some curbs through uh, the middle sector before we get into uh, the, the long back straights in sector three. This is what I'm, I'm talking about right here, this right-hander. We actually do get the car up on the curb there. And uh, it, it glides over fairly nicely. It looks like that curb is maybe a little bit easier to ride this year. Uh, as opposed to 22, where if you got it slightly wrong, it'd be like an auto spin curb. If, if you've either got to go like full send over those curbs, I put the, the whole right hand up almost like on top of the curb on an AstroTurf bit to uh, to get the grip. But it seems like the grip is still there, even if you don't quite nail it. But still, I would like to nail it because uh, that sets you up really nicely. Uh, coming to the end of the lap now, seven tenths up, and we're looking fairly good for a Q3 appearance. Devin Butler's in P14 at the moment. Again, we're very closely matched on pace, but we are extracting a lot of that new tire pace, which uh, really gives us the magic this season. Being able to get the pace out of the new tires, I think has been our secret to success. On older tires, it just doesn't click for us. Uh, so the early parts of Q2 and Q3, when we do use the used tires, we're not, go we're not that great. We're not that quick, particularly as well, like in races when we get deep into stints and the tires start to wear off. We also lose a bit of our relative pace compared to when we've got new tires. So uh, it's definitely an aspect that the AI are stronger than me at, and it's something I need to improve. But I, I think that's pretty common across the board of most other people's career mode saves and, and yours as well. So uh, let me know if that's, that's something you're struggling with if you've got any suggestions or solutions to being a bit more consistent over the course of a full race stint then let me know but i think that's just a symptom of the the handling model and our limitations as as a driver as a player on this year's game I, i'm not sure there's too much we can do about that but again open to ideas anyway this lap is coming to an end now across the line and we go p6 in qualifying three I uh, just didn't quite have the, the pace of the top two teams there. Maybe Lando Norris I could have grabbed on a really perfect lap, but, um, you know, the lap that I did was, was pretty solid in its entirety as well. So I can't really complain, especially when I compare myself to my teammate, Devin, uh, in the mid-teens of uh, grid position. So we, we really are getting the most out of this car, I'd say, and uh, our teammate is doing a decent job, could be doing better. Could also be doing worse as well, but uh, not a bad place to start for the sprint tomorrow in this Belgian Grand Prix. Let's see if we can move forwards and get even more points. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. I really like these formats because it gives me an extra chance to move forward to, to grab some cheap points against my rivals. There's no real, uh, you know, strategy that comes into this. Well, there's a little bit, uh, particularly this year with the benefit of running a uh, soft compound tire. We've got some rain on the horizon in that second last quadrant of the Grand Prix. If that comes a little sooner than anticipated, then we're set for a very interesting race. Do we go for the inters or do we stick it out on the dries? Uh, this strategy and with the weather that actually actually really helps my strategy uh because we're going on the softs and we will die off in terms of pace in the final few laps but if the rain comes then that's going to save our bacon we're going to go full send off this start everyone else around us with the exception of norris is on mediums so could be big potential to get another sprint race win here in this season of career mode we are underway for the saturday sprint of the belgian gp a terrible start 
from Charles Leclerc. He's been watching too many TM at Mardi videos from F122, it seems. But uh, we get him very quickly. Unfortunately, Norris hesitated as we headed into turn one. I probably could have got him as well on the run into turn one. I wanted to get the inside line on most of those drivers, and that would have really set us up nicely. But alas, we uh, only have to settle for uh, two places gained off the start. Norris in our slipstream might be having a look up the inside into the Lacom chicane. This is where we're weak in qualifying. He has a, look, a big look up the inside into that right-hander. Uh, absolutely no, left no space to go through there side by side. So we had to uh, cut the chicane. Norris did us dirty here. So we just avoided an accident and carried on our merry way. Unfortunately, we've lost a bit of ground to the Red Bulls. That is not what we need. We want to be fighting for the top three places here and see if we can steal some extra few points. We've got to strike while the iron's hot here, while we've got these soft compound tires. Because I want to say after like lap four or five, the mediums are probably coming to their own a little bit. So let's see if we can get some track position, use a quicker car to carry us along with DRS and Slipstream. And uh, dare I say, go for something pretty ridiculous in this race. That's a pretty ridiculous gap I tried to go for. Forcing the door open on Sergio Perez. He gives us a little bit more space than Norris. And we move up into the top three. However, however, that's a big uh, as margin to Verstappen. One and a half seconds. We're going to have to hope on those guys battling a little bit. And unfortunately, that is not what we got. They uh, are playing it smart. They're, they're working together to pull away from the rest of the pack. Verstappen realizes that Russell is, isn't exactly a championship threat given he was in Mercedes and hasn't scored as many points as he otherwise would have if he stayed at Ferrari for the entirety of the season. His main rival is Perez, who's been so strong as an AI this season on this game. Um, I don't know what Perez has been having for breakfast this, this game cycle, but he's absolutely cracked. And we're doing our best job to, uh, to keep him at bay. But that Red Bull is so quick. So, so quick in a straight line. There's nothing I can do to fight that. My tires now, I called it. They're going off lap five, lap six. Unfortunately, uh, the weather prediction looks like it's way off because we're getting into that, you know, end of the race phase where it's meant to be raining and we still got blue skies. So the weather center at Marduk Motorsport needs an overhaul. I think we need a new helipad as well. Hell, even getting a helipad would be a good start for this team. We've been, uh, you know, busy spending our dosh on the on the car development. We've been going really ham on that, by the way. Penultimate lap of the Grand Prix. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're just hanging on for the ride here, trying to cling on to the DRS of Lando Norris. We're not going to get that. We're low on battery. We're low on tire tread and uh, low on chances to score some big points in this race. A top five would still be a great result but not quite as good as I was hoping for in the early stages of this race. Last chance for Leclerc here with DRS as he goes round the outside into the Lacum chicane. Ah, oh, and he's got it. Just had the momentum, just had the speed, just had the grip to get the job done. And now we've got Ocon. Try no, that's not Ocon, that's Gasly. My bad. Gasly trying to have a go in the Alpine. On this last lap, you can see the battery is absolutely flashing as we're trying to keep the Alpine behind. P6 in this race is not ideal. P7 would be a disaster given uh, the start of this race. But we will bank the three points gained from the sprint. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Started well, but we just didn't have the pace of the race leaders, unfortunately. That's to be expected. You know, I wasn't expecting any miracles. Uh, you know, I was hoping to be like, really optimistic about our chances to, to hang on to the top three. Uh, certainly didn't help that Verstappen and, and George got away in the early laps and we didn't have anyone to tow us along away from Perez and from everyone else. But when I got overtaken, it was, it was kind of 1v1 battles and I wasn't able to really capitalize on other people battling around me. It was, uh, it was very hard to retain my track position. Uh, the slipstream in DRS is, is very potent this year. So if you're the one in front... It's not going to be a good time for you, even with the strength of our engine. Tomorrow could be tough. Time for the Belgian Grand Prix. Hopefully we've got more pace.
welcome then as we take a step back into the nostalgic golden days of motorsport. Spa is unashamedly a throwback and all the better for it. Climbs, drops, sharp turns, chicanes, sweeping high speed corners, all while taking in some of the most beautiful scenery that Europe has to offer. This might sound like a travel brochure, but it's not. It's a race day. Welcome along to Spa Francorchamps for the Belgian Grand Prix. So here we are once again, ready to go racing through the Ardennes Forest. 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners, and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, uh, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there's no place quite like it. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Norris, Leclerc, Benjamin, Gasly, Bottas, Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Sainz, Sonoda, Oscar Piastri, Butler, Ocon, Joe, De Vries, Stroll, Holkenberg, Sargent, Magnussen, Sargent. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. And what would any Grand Prix weekend be without the one and only Anthony Davidson alongside me? as always, to talk you through the action. Why don't we kick off by discussing Max Verstappen? Well, it was a really impressive lap in qualifying to get pole position, but are they going to be able to hold on to the lead into the first corner with so many quick starters around them? So we're in for an exciting start then, I'm sure. And then they'll all start to settle down a bit and try and find a rhythm as they plan the next phase of the Grand Prix. It's important to know when to push and when to hold back so as not to overcook those tires early on. Here we go then. This is the feature of the weekend, the Grand Prix of Belgium. Again, it looks like we've got some weather at the back end of the race. We've got a thunderstorm hitting us right at the death of this Grand Prix. If there's any safety cars or anything, then that definitely will hopefully delay the race long enough to see that weather strike. Hopefully the forecast is accurate today and we do get some weather interruption because it doesn't look like we have the pace for a podium on merit. We're going to have to hope for some carnage. Hopefully we're a little bit stronger on the medium compound tire. Uh, the soft just didn't work for us after five laps. So uh, it looks like tire wear is, is pretty brutal. Even with our singular tire wear upgrade on, uh, we may even go for a, a two-stop race, which we are looking at at this stage. Um, if there's any VSC, if there's any safety car, the two-stop is immediately quicker. Here we go then, the formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. We will soon find out indeed. If you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like and that would really help me out. Subscribe to the channel as well. If you want to see all of my F1 23 videos in the future, we're going to have these My Team episodes rolling in thick and fast so uh make sure you are subscribed for that but here we go then ready for a historic race on the formula one calendar the belgian grand prix this first lap is always one of the most exciting moments of the whole season the slip streaming down into the lake on chicane is uh is is great fun particularly when you're in the pack so let's see if we can do some damage on this first lap not literally but figuratively Five red lights, and away we go for the Belgian Grand Prix. Looks like a good start, and no one blocking us off the line. Leclerc, two from two for terrible starts. Up the inside of Norris, who tries to turn across us. Russell squeezed on the outside of two red bulls there, and Perez takes the lead, the early lead of this Belgian Grand Prix. First place is not the place you want to be as you run up the hill of uh, Eau Rouge and Radion for the first time, trying to get a run on Sergio Perez and uh, those immediately ahead of us, but blocked off massively by George Russell heading into the Lake Comte Chicane. Norris is trying to have a look up my inside. Everyone getting very defensive into this section of the circuit. A lot of weaving around, a lot of blocking, a lot of weaving, and uh, we do get up onto the podium places of this race. Massive slide there. That's not what you want to see on lap one. Lap one of a 22-lap race. Uh, the tire stint here is looking 
Like a similar kind of stint length to what we ran in the sprints after, like I said, five, six laps, the tires are pretty much done. So um, it, it may be worth changing up the strategy and going for a set of mediums. I'm not locked into that two stop, by the way. Uh, another option we have is to go for the undercut by a couple of laps, go onto the mediums, and then stay on the mediums until it rains. That is also an option, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. The, it, what I like about the strategy on this year's game is it's it's not just a one-stop anymore. It's not just medium hards. There's, there's so many options now. The hard is quite a slow tire. The softs are super fast, but also wear out just as fast in these 50% races. So there's a lot of ambiguity with, uh, with the strategy, and I like that. We're exploring that. Every race is a new test. It's a new experiment to see what the hell works. The tire wear rates are so different. Um, the tire compound, like I'm talking C3, 4, 5, etc. They're all different and they behave differently on this year's game. And they have different tire temperature windows. So everything is like so variable every race. Uh, so it just makes it super interesting. And I, I'm, I'm really excited to see, you know, when, when we get that strategy absolutely bang on. We've been a little bit conservative the last couple of races. We've just been doing, you know, sticking to what we know with the, the one stop doing the undercut. Um, but I'm not afraid to try my hand at a two stop every so often if it means that we're in the fight for a win. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's super interesting. Hopefully, hopefully the passion is coming across because uh, I'm certainly loving just the raw gameplay of F123, even though, you know, we haven't had too much new brought to the system for my team this year. Certainly the dynamics are a lot different this year, and I'm really appreci appreciating that. Anyway, uh, fight for the front here. The Red Bulls are fighting away very well, very, very hard at each other. There's no team orders here. They're actually dragging themselves towards me. We are in the DRS of these guys. And that is making life a lot more easy for us in uh, maintaining this position. If we didn't have DRS on those guys ahead, then we'd be absolutely gone in this race. Uh, Russell would be would be smothering us. He'd, we'd be going backwards in this race. But thankfully, we've had the, I guess, the extra ammunition of, of that DRS, meaning I can spend less on battery and just uh, defend a lot easier. But we're going into the pits now. For that undercut that I spoke about onto the medium compound tires, I'm still up in the air as to whether we do a second stop in this race. But this is a risk. This is a big risk. We're going onto mediums very early, a couple of laps earlier than what uh, the other soft runners will be boxing. And we put ourselves in very heavy traffic here. Second last in the Grand Prix, only eight hundredths of a second away from being nowhere in this race. But we're going to have an enormous advantage on those old soft compound runners. We're going to be like a second lap quicker. Maybe maybe more than that. Um, the drop-off on these tyres. Well, we saw how bad the drop-off was in the sprint race. Here we go. Switch back on. Not one, but two Williams cars. And we go straight up in a P19 in this Belgian Grand Prix. That is the difference right there between old tyres and new. Even though these tyres are technically like, you know, nearly a second slower than the, than the soft. The new tire gain you get is absolutely nuts. We just waltz past these guys like we're <laughs> racing 50 AI in terms of difficulty level. It's it's uh, it, it's crazy, but uh, yeah, just to reiterate as well, I'm running 110 AI. We are we are running the max difficulty, but these guys they look so slow when they're on old tires. So the uh, the two stop could genuinely work, and and just to prove that switch back from last lap was not a fluke, we do it again. <laughs> we do it again, straight up in a P15. Devin Butler, our teammate, next. Uh, two and a half seconds up the road. We cut that down to one second after half a lap, which is uh, absolutely nuts. We're getting DRS off of Sonoda. Who's going to get DRS off of Butler? And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get in the mix and get ahead of both these guys in this DRS zone. One of the Ferraris also boxed. Charles Leclerc is in for hard compound tyres and we will be going to the end of the Grand Prix. So we're starting to see... The pit stops shake out here. We've been making great progress here. Do we go the inside of our teammate? Devin Butler leaves the door open. Right to the death. Thank you so much, teammate, for seeing me coming. Otherwise, we were heading straight to the scene of a massive accident between two, mate, two teammates. And that would have been quite embarrassing. That would have been breaking point 3.0 right here. Thankfully. Uh, he, uh, he has the awareness to, to see us coming. Thank you, Devin. Uh, I'll certainly pay you back next time. 
But uh, yeah, settling into this race now, guys. And Max Verstappen rejoins the circuit on hard compound tires. 1.2 seconds behind us. So the undercut has worked. It's not worked as well as I hoped it would. As uh, I thought I'd be three, maybe four seconds up the road from one of the Red Bulls. But, uh, you know, the heavy traffic is, has certainly played a part in that. As we get up the inside of Oscar Piastri, also hasn't stopped yet in this race. Max Verstappen, though, is also going to have to traverse Piastri. And uh, now this will be our chance to break outside maybe an extra second or two uh, while he deals with uh, the slow McLaren. Let's run on board with him and uh, see how he deals with this, if at all. Straight up into overtake. He's going for the move. Oh, my words. Thank you, Piastri. Thank you so much for not defending that one. <laughs> oh, man. Verstappen is absolutely flying. The straight line speed of that Red Bull is absolutely nuts. And uh, that means he's probably going to be on us within the next lap. Sergio Perez is uh, also into the pit lane. So is our teammate, Devin Butler, onto the medium compound tires, I assume, given how long he stayed out in this race. And uh, out comes the second Ferrari. Of George Russell, well behind us. So uh, that's the state to play. We lead from Verstappen, uh, from Sergio Perez, who's on the medium compound tire. So Sergio is going to have awesome pace from now until the end of the Grand Prix. He also overtakes Oscar Piastri, like he's not even moving through the middle sector. His unorthodox moves for the Red Bulls are working out very nicely. Halfway stage of this Grand Prix. And at this stage, we have ascendancy. We have control in this race. But it's going to be short-lived. Verstappen is in our DRS. He's in our slipstream. And uh, we are already slower than the Red Bulls. It is only going to get worse from here. So at this point, I'm doing a rain dance. I am absolutely praying that the rain starts showering immediately as Verstappen goes for the dive up the inside into the uh, bus stop chicane. That's actually not a bad play for us because we're going to get DRS in one corner's time on Max Verstappen. So hopefully he won't drive away too much. I mean, he's not really gaining all too much in terms of traction this year. So that's awesome that uh, you know we can somewhat stay with the AI out of crucial corners like that one to be close enough to actually have an answer back at the Red Bull. So off we go, straight up into overtake. No, no overtake, just DRS. Pure slipstream and drag reduction gets us ahead of the Red Bull. Beautiful. We just need to do that for another 10 times and uh, easy game, we won the Grand Prix. But that is a lot easier said than done because Max is gonna be so quick on those hard compound tires, especially when we do that. That is the other trait of F123. When the tires go off, especially on the rears, you really start to feel it. Five minutes until rainfall expected. Five minutes until rain. Drives definitely seem like the fastest tire at the moment. Yes, that's what we want to hear. The rain is inbound in this Belgian Grand Prix. Let it rain, let it pour. <laughs> we need the win heading into Singapore which is definitely three races away. But anyway, uh, we're, we're struggling. We are we are really struggling for pace. The other Red Bull has joined in this fight. Here goes Max around the outside again. Again, I'm pretty content to let him go at uh, this corner because it gives us DRS, or it usually would, into this uh, last corner. But it's it's really only one or two corners that we have to stay within slipstream range of the Stappen for, and then we can kind of re-overtake with DRS. So... Yeah, let's just keep this up for as long as we can. If we can keep these guys within touching distance, or dare I say, even be ahead, then um, we'll head into the finals, into the race, on the intermediate tyres as the lead car. Um, let, let's hope the Red Bull make a blunder or they don't react in time or they have to double stack uh, both of their drivers. We, we, I, I'm certainly confident I can beat one of the Red Bulls because of the double stack or having to carry on for an extra lap. Here comes Max up the inside. <sighs> Just can't defend against that. By the time I realized he was there, it was too late to, uh, to double down on the defense. And uh, he's got us a lot earlier in the lap than what I'd like. That's an extra warning for track limits as well. So our chances of winning this Grand Prix have uh, just gone down a bit, but we're still thankfully fairly close to Verstappen. Um, thankfully, he didn't overtake us like at the end of the first sector and then had the entirety of the middle sector to run away because if he did, 
uh, it'll be game over. Thankfully, we are fairly quick in the straights and uh, those Red Bulls don't get too far away from us. So there we go. Back into the lead of the Grand Prix once again. Hopefully only a couple of minutes now, only one or two more laps before we can dive in for intermediate tyres because these mediums, they've, they've only been on the car for like eight laps and they're already spent. Look at that drifting, almost, that, that sliding heading into No Name. Uh, it's, uh, is that No Name? The corner before No Name. It's, uh, it's not good. I, there's, there's just some tracks on this game where the tyre wear is just not salvageable. And uh, once you get above 25-30% on the rear tyres, it just becomes undrivable. Uh, it's, it, Baku is one. This might be another. Um, I'm, I'm dreading doing Monza a little bit because of all the heavy braking zones and, and how the rear could step out on approach for those slow speed corners. That seems to be the recipe for disaster is uh, heavy braking zones into 90 degree right handers um, and, and street tracks, I suppose. So Singapore could be interesting as well. But we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there as we block off uh, Sergio Perez very hard from going up the inside into... Uh, Blonchum, no, it's not Blonchum. Why have I forgotten that corner name? Come on, Ben, I've been doing this for 13 years. Commentating on the same F1 tracks, day in, day out. And I can't get the basics right. Why do you guys subscribe to me, honestly? I don't know. Anyway, we are faking Red Bull. We are bringing the team out with uh, the tyres ready to come in to see if they get baited into intermediate tyres a little early. No, they don't respond. Tire situation is an interesting one, but I think the right call is to stick with what we've got for now. But we are not too far away from a switch to intermediate tires. I still don't even think this is the right lap yet. We still haven't seen any puddles uh, formulate on on the surface of the track just yet. There's not too many drops on the screen. We haven't seen the DRS get disabled yet. It's just a little bit too early to uh, to take a risk, especially when we're still leading. Um, we're in control just about. But uh, we want to we want to make sure we stay in the lead once we do get on the intermediate tires. If we give Red Bull like uh, a lap of free air, even if even if we box now and it's maybe the right call, they could still probably overcut us and, and come out ahead. Even if it is like line ball between uh, the dries and the intermediate to this stage. Now it's starting to get there. Now it looks like we're actually formulating some some water on the track. That's a massive moment through Blanchemont as we dip the front left tire on the curb at over 200 kilometers an hour. Here's the replay again from the onboards. That is not what you want to be doing at the best of times, let alone when the track is greasy and wet and the tires have most certainly seen their best. In we go for intermediate tires and it looks like no one has followed us in. I think this is the ideal lap to come in for intermediate tyres. We've got five laps remaining in this race. Yeah, and you can see my tyres were absolutely cooked there. Nearly 50% on the mediums. We've got a yellow flag uh, on the run into Blanchemont. And it looks like Lance Stroll is out of the Grand Prix. If a safety car comes out now, that probably saves those who have carried on for an extra lap because they have to slow down and stick to a delta, as do we. And they nearly get a free pit stop out of that. But I don't think... The safety car is coming out. So the FIA are looking after us big time here. We're going to get a massive undercut on the Red Bull drivers, one of which has to double stack or carry on for another lap on dry compound tyres. I think I'm getting deja vu. This feels like deja vu to 10 years ago. The Malaysian Grand Prix, where we dived in for intermediate tyres at the death of that race. And uh, we chase down all the leaders on dry compound tires. Here they are on the onboard. They're carrying on. This is Malaysia 2013 recreated. They are staying out. They're being stubborn. They want their track position. But I only, I only boxed on the last lap for intermediate tires at Sepang, a much shorter lap time. This is Spa with three laps remaining. The track distance is nearly double the length. We're going to absolutely obliterate these race leaders. I can't believe they're staying out. Gasly runs wide. We sneak up the inside and we quickly move back into the top 10. Here we go. We're going to chase down the race leaders. They're responding finally on this lap. But I think it's too little too late for the race leaders. One of the Red Bulls actually carried on. That's Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc 
carrying on on their hard compound tires. We're going to be on the Claire <laughs> literally in seconds. Here we go through the fast left hander and we overtake Leclerc like he's an F2 car. That is the difference of being on the right tire at the right time. Max Verstappen peels into the pit lane and doesn't give us the satisfaction of overtaking on circuits. We're going to win the Belgian Grand Prix as long as we can keep it together for these final two laps of this Grand Prix. It should be pretty academic, but here's the replay of the overtake on Charles Leclerc around the outsides. It's Puon. Puon, I finally remembered the name. Around the outsides. We put a lot of faith in Leclerc to actually not understeer into our path. If I had my time again, I'd probably be a bit more patient and not chance a move this risky. Look at how close we got there. That is uh, a risk that we didn't need to take. We lead the Belgian Grand Prix by uh, what was over six seconds. Uh, Perez is actually catching us quite considerably and the Inters are wearing out again quicker than I thought they would. So uh, thankfully we do have the margin to, to uh, the Red Bulls, but they actually are really closing us in as we head on to the last lap of the Grand Prix. Just two more corners to traverse and we will get redemption <laughs> from the last race from Hungary only one week later, crossing the line for our third race win of the season. Oh, superb driving. That is the race win, my friend. Well done. What a race. What a day. What a win. Are we in this championship fight? Surely not. A nearly flawless performance here then, and a commanding victory. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? Rain always has the potential to liven up a race and mix up the order, and they've taken full advantage of that to claim the victory today. It's always a bit of a lottery when the conditions are like this, but they've managed to stay on circuit and have come out on top. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Once again, we do the unthinkable 10 years later. It's nice to know that the AI haven't got any smarter in that time. Um, well, maybe they have. Maybe they have. Normally, in the final three laps of a Grand Prix, they tend not to box. They tend not to respond. But uh, I think we really forced their hand there. They saw how much quick we were compared to them. And um, they did respond. But it was, it was too little too late. Those who went early onto the intermediate tyres really benefited massively. Lando Norris uh, was a prime example of that. Verstappen carried on for too long. He would have got P2 in this race. He might have even won it if he responded at the right time. But he ended up in P5, P6 in this race. Absolutely devastating for Red Bull. Christian Horner with pie on the face after today's strategy blunder. The unknown team wins again. Devin Butler, P16. Dave, what could have been? If I had control of Devon, I would have told him to box the same lap as me, and he probably would have got top five in that race. He really, he really would have been absolutely flying. But uh, yeah, that's that's a feature I'd love to call for in, in future F1 games. Being able to control the strategy of our teammates. And I tell you what, then, then we'd be an unstoppable force <laughs> in my team. P6 in the driver's standings. Uh, some 55 points behind the lead of the uh, championship runners of Sergio Perez, Leclerc, and Hamilton. If we count the uh, the missing points we, we lost out on in Hungary, uh, we'd, we'd be like 30-odd points behind and really in the question for the championship. Let me know. What do you guys think? Uh, can we keep up this momentum of wins? Who knows? We're going to keep upgrading. But uh, we, we still are losing a little bit of momentum in the development race. We need to get our facilities up. We are going to hit our ceiling of spec one upgrades. And if we don't upgrade soon, we, we literally will run out of upgrades. Things that we can spend our money on, our resource points on. So that's going to be the goal uh, of the uh, near future. To see if we can get in the fight for the Drivers' Championship. Constructors is, is, is done because we are only fighting with, uh, with one hand, with one driver. But uh, the drivers, who knows? Watch this space. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.